Hey, it's Tom from WPWithTom.com, and in this video, I'll be covering how to use the Elementor Pro Post Widget. So before we dive in, I just wanted to say that if you don't already have Elementor Pro, I highly recommend picking it up. And if you want to do so and support my channel, you can get it at WPWithTom.com slash Elementor. I also wanted to mention that I have a whole playlist of videos on how to use Elementor Pro elements and widgets. And if you want to see those, be sure to subscribe. So with that out of the way, let's dive into the video here. Now to get started, I actually already set up a heading that just says Elementor Pro post widget right here. We're going to need to go and add a new section here. So we'll just click this plus and then we'll hit the plus again. I'll make it a full width section. And I'll hit the plus icon and drag in the pro post element here and drop it in. So how this works is by default, it pulls your post from your blog post. So if I'm over here back in my dashboard area, you can see that there's four posts that I wrote. And those are the corresponding posts right here within this widget area. So by default, we have a few different skin options right here. You can show cards like this. And there it pulls in my face and then it also pulls in the categories right here. And then we also have a full content one, which is going to show the whole post like that. I actually really like how this one looks right here with the cards and where it pulls this image in from is actually from the image associated with your Gravatar image that your website email is using. So it's within the dashboard. If we went back here and I just went back into this area, it's going to be the one right here that it's pulling from for this contact info. So that is the image that it's actually pulling the Gravatar profile picture from. And that is the picture that's going to display here. So in this example, I actually only have four posts and I'm going to go with a three column wide and three posts showing per page. Now let's say you wanted to do two and four just to see what that looks like. You can see that here is what two and four would look like. These images are a little bit distorted, but I'm going to go over that here in a second. Now you can also go and make it maybe two by two and change it like that. And then just show two images only. It depends what you're looking for. I'm going to go three columns and three posts per page. I really like how that layout looks overall. I think it looks a little bit better than the others. So here you have the options to show the image or not. I'm going to leave that on, but here's what it looks like with it off. And there it is back on. And then you can use a masonry grid if you want. I actually am not a fan of masonry grid. You can see it makes this one in the middle a little bit longer right here than the other two on the sides. I'm going to go and turn that off. And in terms of image size, you can see that this is a little bit distorted on the screen. It's not super clear. I would make sure you at least use this medium large size right here. And it looks a lot more clear once you go and put that into effect. So image ratio, you can change the overall size in proportion to this. So if we go and make it larger, let's just go and make it maybe near the max. You can see how it looks or you can go a lot lower. I would say somewhere in the 0.5 to 0.7 range is probably where you want to be. I'm going to just leave it at this 0.65. Here you can choose if you want to display the title of your blog post and you can turn that off or on. I think you're definitely going to want to have that on. People want to know what the blog post is about. It's pretty simple. But if you do say what the actual post is going to be about in the image, maybe it's just text saying post element or blog post or whatever, then people might know what it is and you might not need the title. So here I would recommend having the title tag be an H2 or H3 just in terms of SEO. And down here you can choose if you want to have this excerpt showing or not. If you just want the title, you would just turn this off. And then no one's going to really know how the post starts off. I tend to like it more with the excerpt and I would probably make the excerpt even a little bit longer, maybe like 50 words or something like that. So people can get an idea of what the post is about. And that's a way to hook the reader in or draw some more interest in the post when they can see what you're going to be covering within it right there. So I'm going to leave that as is with 50 on there. And here is the metadata at the bottom. So this says the date and the number of comments. So I know a lot of times when I'm writing blog posts on other websites I have, I actually don't want to show the date because the post might be a little bit outdated. I know this is a common thing people run into. So you might want to go right here and just turn off the date. You could go and add something else. So you could add like author, for example, 
but I'm already right here in the image, so I don't know if that is kind of duplicating the efforts by doing that, but that's how you would go and change that. I'm gonna just add date back in so you can see it in here. And then it says separator. So right here we have that dot. You can go and change this to other things. You can go and make it a dash between. You can go and make it a bar like that. You can change it up and have it however you really want with the separator between. But it's just this little division area that you see right here on the screen. So if we go down here, you can choose to have read more or not. I prefer to have read more on. By default it is. And then you can actually change the read more text. So if you don't want it to say read more, you could have it say something else. And down here you can open it in a new window if you want when someone clicks on it. I prefer to just have it open in the current window, so I'm going to leave that off. And then here is the badge. So the badge is right here, and it pulls from the categories area by default. So right now this category that this post element post falls under is business. This one would be marketing, and this one would be business, for example. So you can actually choose that to pull from tags or formats. So if you have a specific tag that you tag different posts for, you might want to pull from that. I'm going to go with categories here. I did try to experiment with this and put multiple categories. So I put business and marketing for one, and it actually pulled from the first one in the order. So it actually pulled from business over marketing in terms of how that went. So it looks like you can actually only have one displaying in this area when you look at categories. So the avatar is this image right here. We can toggle that on or off if we want. It's totally up to you. I'm just gonna leave it on for this case here. And we'll go down to where it says query. So query gives you some pretty powerful options in it. So you can choose which source you're actually getting them from. So it by default is post. I'm gonna leave it as post, but if you wanted to choose from pages or something else, you could do that. However, this is the Elementor Pro post widget after all. So I'm gonna leave it as post here. Now let's say you wanted to go and have a featured post and then not make that featured post show up in the other default post here. So if this post is the one that I want to be the featured post, let's go and do an example here. If I right click and I duplicate this whole section and then we go down here, now we have the same post here as up here. Now what I'm gonna do up here is I'm going to make this one post and feature this post right here. So let's right click edit post for this section. And then I'll go over to where it says layout. And here I'll just choose one and I'll display just one post per page. So there it is, it's displaying this one post, but you see this one post is also right here, the post element post. So what I would do down here is I would right click edit post in this area. And then what I would do is go down to where it says query click on that, exclude, and then I would exclude an offset one. So now it is no longer showing this post element blog post with this image here. It's actually showing three other ones. Remember I had four in total when we started and this is the other three that it's showing. So this one is now like a featured blog post on your blog. I'm actually gonna go and delete this one right here. So let's just go and delete. And now we're left with these three again that we had before. So if we wanted to, we can actually change that so it's not actually offsetting that one. We can put it down to zero and it will pull that post back in that we initially had there. So you can also change things here like the date. You can go and choose only ones from the past week or order by a certain one, or you can choose the order by ascending or descending in the order. I like that feature because sometimes you want to change that. I've had that experience myself in the past on blogs. And then you can choose to ignore sticky posts, yes or no. I'm gonna go right down to where it says pagination right here, because I think this is something that's worth covering. So right here we have none by default. So if you have extra posts besides these three, you might wanna show that there's other ones. So right here you have the option for numbers, and it will basically tell you there's another page, a second page here. And then you can limit the page number, so you can have only five display, for example or you can go to previous and next, and this is the one I tend to like, previous and next, or I actually like this one, numbers and previous or next. So you have an option to sort through all the various posts that have been posted before on the site. So that's a nice feature to have, and I really think it helps keep people on the website for longer. So I recommend enabling this if you have numerous posts on your site. So I'm just gonna go and click update right here, 
and then I'm going to move over to the style section. So if we click on a style tab, these are pretty straightforward edits within a style tab. And if you wanted to change the columns gap, this is the gap between these. You can do that so you can adjust it and make it wider or closer together. And you can actually have a button right up next to it. I'm going to just go with 25 here for this example. The rows gap, if I had a second row below, this is, would be the gap between the two rows from where the fourth, fifth, and sixth post would be. I don't have one in this case, so I'm just going to leave it as is. Now, if we went down to where it says card, you can go and change something like the background color. So it's going to change this white area right here when we do that. So let's just go and make it black for this example. And I'll just do a quick little edit to this post. So if you want to, you can go and change the border width, the radius. So if you wanted to change the radius, you can see it makes it more circular. And you can have some corners on it. So I'm just going to go and put it at 25, just so it has some corners on the actual post layout here. Now you can also have a hover effect with a gradient and change that as well. I'm actually going to go down though to where it says image and here I'm going to change where the badge is. So right here it's located in the upper right by default. Let's just say you want it in the upper left. People read left to right in English so that's where you probably want it to be in my opinion and people will quickly see if it's the category that they're looking for or not. You can also go and change the color of it. So let's just say we wanted it to be a little bit different color. I'll go with this blue or something like that. You can change it and, and vary it however you want on the color of the actual badge here. I'm going to go clear it and leave it as green for this example. I think the green and black will go pretty good together. And if we go down here, let's just go and close the image one and go to content. So within content, I'm going to go and make the title white and that's this right here. And I'll go down to where it says excerpt and I'll make that white as well for this text. So we have white text on the back on the black background there. So you also can do the same thing for meta if you want and change that as well at the bottom. And then you can see it changes the overall look of how these posts are displayed here. We can click update and if you want it to go down to pagination, you can change how this looks as well in this section. So that about wraps up this brief Elementor Pro post widget tutorial here. This is one of the more powerful widgets within Elementor Pro in my opinion, and it really has a lot to offer. I hope you were able to at least learn a little bit from this quick tutorial and come up with something that would work well for your website. If you enjoyed this video, please consider giving it a thumbs up and subscribing for more WordPress related tutorials. Thanks for viewing and have a wonderful day.